been a practicing artist for over 30 years. I studied at LSU. I've been an artist since I was at least officially nine years old when Adelaide Brent, who was the first director of the Louisiana Arts and Science Center, said, I had art with her for 12 years. I went to the same school for 12 years, St. Joe's. She was my art teacher, my inspiration, my mentor, my art mother. And she found a little small child who's very shy and very quiet. She found something I could do. Now, I loved school, book lines, but she found something I could do this. So once upon a time, there was a little child who would daydream every day. She'd look out the window of school and play art. And she would imagine her head all these wonderful creations that she could make, but not until the weekend came. So she'd go home and make these wonderful things with bits and pieces from her mother's sewing basket, from her father's workshop. She'd pick up bits of wood, pieces of scrap, and things that were too uh, hard for her to put together. She'd ask her father, and with his strong, kind hands, he would very carefully help her and show her how to put things together. So he was my first fascinator. He helped fasten my pieces. Anyway, the, the, the child became a woman, and the rest of the story you know. My life, I want to tell you a little bit how it goes, but each and every day I walk out this little winding flagstone path to my studio, which I call the lab because as an artist, I feel, well, I'm a maker. I'm not an artist. I make things. I'm an experimenter. I'm, I'm a scientist. I'm a problem solver. I have to figure things out. If I didn't have a problem to solve, I don't think I would make art. But anyway, I'm the woman who speaks to found objects, inanimate objects. And I think I've spoken to objects all my life, and they speak to me, which is just beautiful. I lose myself in my world when I go out there. This body of work is sort of a culmination. I have worked with the found object, the antique found object, which makes it very precious. I've worked this way for about 12 to 15 years, I would suppose. I, I've been a collector, okay? I've had to collect all, the, all these objects. I collect them. Some are precious. Um, these, the, the thorns over here, you wouldn't say they're precious, but I have made them precious. What I do, I rescue something that is a cast off in some of these cases. Pieces that perhaps would get thrown away, or even they're antique, they might get put in someone's drawer and no one would ever notice them. I elevate them, I brush them off, and the pieces start living together well. They form this, this conversation, and they dictate to me where to put them. Uh, it's very exciting working this way. I, my MFA was in painting. My studio art uh, specialty was painting. And my undergrad was in painting and drawing. So, but at the end of grad school, I was attaching objects to my surface of my, uh, I was working on panels because I could really beat the surface up. And I really liked doing that, score the wood, kind of like Brian with his those desks. You know, I love these marks that you could make on a wood panel. I'd attach screen and other objects, because the surface was just boring, the flat surface was boring. And that, you know, it took years for it to jump off the canvas, the wall. Well, some of these are wall pieces. But to jump off the, the two-dimensional painting surface and become um, a relief, these are reliefs, are assemblages in a box, and then finally the standing style, the sculptures. Now, what I enjoy about these, not only the presence that they have, but the reflections that they cast upon the walls. Mm -hmm. uh, that is as interesting to me. And they, they're the positive negative in art. The positive space is just as important as the negative space. The negative space is that which is left between the shapes. And when you teach, you know, I spent my lifetime teaching too. I, I, I loved the classroom when I was a student. And I love the classroom when I taught, and I've taught everyone uh, to adults. I taught uh, at the university and at BRCC, the community college. When you love something so much, and it's so of what you are, you want to share it with others. So I've shared it on my life. 
What are some of the places you found the options? You, Randell, you always ask me these questions. <laughs> Once Randell asked me, I did a piece that was hanging over there. It was a circular piece that had mermaids, these antique mermaids, and it formed a clock. And he said, uh, where did you get those mermaids? I said, well, you know, like he wanted some of those mermaids. Randell likes those mermaids. Randell, well, let me tell you where I get them. Yeah. They come from Paris, the outside of, out, uh, outskirts of Paris. In 2012, I visited uh, a small town, Les Milans, the, the lilacs outside of Paris. And being a collector that I am and attracting found objects, I found that there was a flea market on the outskirts of Paris. Now, this flea market was like no other flea market I've ever been to. Antique furniture, beautiful things, uh, just very priceless things, not just your run-of-the-mill flea market. And I went to a place, I had to find things that I could carry with me on the plane. I found a place that was selling um, lamp parts. And it was with that, in that instant, that I decided I was going to do a series of staggers. When you work intuitively, it comes from within you. An idea just sort of pops up, but you know that it's been perking for a long time. So this piece, Queen of the Paris Flea Market, uh, so that's the title. These brass pieces came from that flea market. So her title refers not just that she's the queen, but she's also from the Paris Flea Market. That's where those came from. Uh, I, now these are not old, of course. They, they're, they're new. But this piece, what happens when I, when I have these pieces sitting around the studio, I semi-assemble them, but then I, they'll sit there for a year or so, and I'll decide, this one was finished, I thought, but it never really looked right. So I kept looking and looking and looking, and I, I, I don't work on one piece at a time like Brian. You, know, you work on several at a time, because if you, you're going to run across a problem. You better believe it when you work like this, so you go to another one. I'll solve that later. You ask someone who's an expert to help you. How am I going to get this thing to stay together? You know, I have this idea. I want it to be born. I want it to stay like this. Then you've got to think of the structural issue. How are you going to get these things? You know, glue just won't work in all cases. These I enjoyed making, and they all related. I did not set out to have pieces that related, but I feel this show relates in a more cohesive way than perhaps any of my other shows. Perhaps it's because of this process of this stacking, this transcendental looking up, trying to reach higher and higher. I think as artists we do work with the spiritual and try to find out, we answer, try to answer the questions that we all have about life, about what comes afterward. So, in, in, so these pieces die, then I give them new life, and then they resurrect, and I just, you know, it's very simple. And artists have worked with that, that repeating theme forever. Okay, questions? I can forget to you. How do you connect, how are you connecting them so that they don't, you know? That's, that's what I said, the structural problem, I like. I, I need a structural engineer, and I have an expert I call in every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> This gentleman in the back, would you stay, sir? Hmm. <laughs> I'm the attachment person. You see, you see, we have a setup. The studio is not only, well, it's an outbuilding. We're so lucky. We live in the city, but out of the city, and we have this wonderful outbuilding. My studio, the lab, is in the front. It, there's a little hallway, a little, like a little hallway, uh, whatever I call it. Then there's an office in which this gentleman resides, resides most of the day, and then there's a tour. So it's our own world, and then Hannah Dog comes out there, and she, she meanders around too, and she gives me ideas too, but this man, you know, I can run next door and say, help, 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 this thing's not staying together. Would you please give me some ideas? <laughs> so I have help. I have, he's my fastener. He's my fascinating fastener. <laughs> <laughs> So, so how does he fasten? <laughs> <laughs> He'll say it's impossible. It's just impossible. I mean, you just you can't do that. I said no. There's never been. My mother grew. My mother raised me, and she said there is no such word as can. 
<laughs> that has gotten gotten me into more trouble in my life. It's been a curse as well as a blessing. So do you have rhymes running through? Yes, yes, yes. I do. Um, like a, you know, a, the, 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 like a lamp. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Just to give it some structural coherence, or they would just. Either I have the objects already because I'm always collecting. I, I can't help myself. I started collecting antique jewelry. I started with Victorian and Edwardian and then Art Deco and that got me into collecting found antique objects. Either I have the object already or I have an idea and I purchase it like, okay, with Charlie, the guy with the hat. I had to purchase those hats and, and they were, they were ready made. But generally, I've got, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe the stuff I have in my <laughs> It's just, I've got boxes and boxes of stuff. Kelsey. Can you talk about the title that you chose for your show? Oh, certainly. Yes, Final Arrangements. I chose the title. It, it functions on two levels. First, these pieces are arranged finally. In other words, they cannot, nothing can be added nor subtracted from any of these pieces. They are complete, cohesive wholes. They are new creations. They're finely arranged. They've come to rest in a fine arrangement. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. They're satisfied. That's what's important. Secondly, I am going to go back to my roots as a painter. I'm going to start working two-dimensionally again. I've been inspired already, and I won't bore you by that. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back, get back on that horse and see if I can ride it again. So thank you, Kelsey, for answering. So I, I thought that final arrangement said these are things to go in my tomb. That's what I was thinking. I'll be I'll be dumped <laughs> off the bridge somewhere. So. <laughs> I was thinking like you, you will. <laughs> well, you know, is it predictive in a Where third way? Yeah. Could it function in another way? Well, it will happen to us all one day. Yeah. What will you do with this, these things you've collected? <laughs> I can't part with them. They have so much them. energy. The energy these pieces have, you just wouldn't believe it. They speak to me so. I was going to say they speak to me. Yeah. Unless anybody wants to buy any of them today. <laughs> <laughs> I should have brought home my <laughs> when, when you're saying they speak to you, it's like some at a certain point, the piece has a will of itself. Oh, it says, look, you got to put me here, and you got to put me here. And, and you can't put me in other, any other way. That's what I'm saying. They speak to me. They control me. I think I'm in control, but I'm not. <laughs> That's a good question.